Hey there, and thank you for the comment. I see comments like this a lot on videos I do about the Apocrypha, and I go into loads of detail about books like Enoch during the class I mentioned at the end of that video. In my opinion, Apocryphal works are deserving of attention. They tell us a lot about the times in which those books were written. But are those works inspired scripture? No. But they tell us a lot about the different ideas, influences, and people around at the time the Bible was written and how their beliefs did shape culture. So sign up for the workshop because we're going deep. You can find it in my profile link, but I'll keep this video as short as I can. The Book of Enoch and Gospels, such as Mary, Thomas, and Judas, are all pseudepigrapha, books whose claimed author isn't the actual author. Attributed to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, the Book of Enoch is a piece of work. Angels, demons, portals through golden triangles, warfare, and Nephilim, why some angels fell from heaven. I mean, it's a ride, and it had a massive impact on many early Christians and how they saw demons and angels and how they interacted with mankind. I mean, have you ever wondered why when you read the Old Testament, demons act one way? By the start of the New Testament, they're everywhere and responsible for human suffering. Well, much of that understanding of demons came about from books like Enoch and other Jewish apocalyptic works that were circulating among Jews during what's called the intertestamental period, roughly 400 years between Malachi and John the Baptist. But after Christ, Enoch soon fell out of favor with Jewish audiences. To a mainstream Jewish rabbi in the second century whose immediate family suffered through the destruction of Jerusalem at the hands of the Romans, the thought of empowered angels who could revolt from God implied that God wasn't sovereign and that something can exist outside of his control. So Enoch was never considered for the Hebrew Bible. Later Jewish mystics, however, called Kabbalists, they lean heavily into Enoch. So mainstream Judaism, Enoch's blasphemous, but in mystic circles, mm, kind of made a lot of sense. But as far as early Christians go, Enoch was very influential. Remember, the first Christians were Hebraic Jews, but after the fall of the temple in 70 AD, eventually Christians became primarily Greek speakers and thinkers. And Enoch explained a lot to them about the interplay of the spiritual and physical world, so it still held on for a while in many early Christian sects. Remember, the first and second centuries, there's no Old Testament and there's no New Testament. There were loads of scrolls and books out there for sure. There were books that were considered uh, part of you know, the Septuagint, but early church fathers such as Justin Martyr, Manichius Felix, Irenaeus, Origen, Cyprian, Hippolytus, Commodianus, Lactantius, and Cassian supported and referenced Enoch quite a bit, with Tertullian in 200 AD saying Enoch was really rejected by the Jews because it contained prophecies pertaining to Christ. But it was never overall seriously considered for Christian canonization because, number one, it wasn't part of the common Septuagint and it wasn't part of the formal Tanakh. Number two, very fantastic. Three, it obviously wasn't written by Enoch, who lived way before the biblical flood. Four, late first and second century Jewish rabbis and scholars rejected its addition to the Hebrew canon. And five, since there were so many questions, it couldn't realistically be considered divinely inspired. But trust me, there would be books that did make the cut that were kind of in the same boat. So there are a few reasons why Enoch didn't make the final cut, but the early church did consider it very important. If you think all this is fascinating, make sure you check out the class because we go way in depth on Enoch. It had quite the impact and it's a lot of fun. But as far as the Gospel of Mary, modern researchers don't know exactly how much the Gospel of Mary was around in the early days. The earliest known copy currently in existence is a fifth century one, but a load of folks argue that it could have been around in a different form in the second century. The thing we have to wrap our heads around is that after the resurrection and ascension of Christ, and especially after the destruction of Jerusalem, many gospels, gospels circulated, with most of them, such as Mary, classified as Gnostic. Gnostic works are a thorny subject in Christianity, and there's loads of debates about them, but Gnosticism, rooted in the Greek word no, was all over the place and expressed many different ideas about Jesus, that he wasn't divine, that he was divine, he was a spirit projection, he was a human who traversed into the spiritual plane, didn't actually hang on the cross, a spirit dead. There's all different types of ideas. Some even said he was the son of a new god at war with the god of the Old Testament. So you can see why texts that Gnostic ideals, they're not necessarily in the Bible, but they were extremely common in the first century church. But is the Gospel of Mary actually Gnostic? Well, loads of debate there, but it was never considered for inclusion and has been thrown into that swirl of mysterious Gnostic texts out there that pop up every once in a while. That's why it's never been considered for inclusion in the Bible. So I hope that answers your question. God bless. Click the pin videos for more.